Let's all learn how to download and use our Microsoft Word templates to lay out our labels. Now the first thing we're going to want to do to download a template of one of our label sizes is go to laserinkjetlabels.com. From here, in the top navigation bar, you'll see the Design Center. We're going to want to click on that. Now that is going to take us here. And here we're going to see the template page. And we're going to want to click on the link that says Get Templates. You'll know it's the link because when you scroll over it, it turns pink or red. We'll go ahead and click on that. Here you can scroll down to find links to document files of all of our stock label sizes. Now we are going to want to go to Word Document. First we're going to find our part number. If you already know the part number that you're interested in, go ahead and look for it. And then we're going to look for the Word Document version of that part number. Now for me, for this example, I am going to use this one right here. Now we're going to want to right click on that file name. And then we're going to want to select either download linked file as, or it might come up as save link as, depending on the browser you're using. And then save the file in a folder location of your choosing. Now for me, I've already made a folder on my desktop called Word Templates. So I'm going to go ahead and save it in there. Okay, so now after my download, I can go to the folder where I just saved the template and double click on it. And it should open automatically in Microsoft Word. Or if you want, you can open up Microsoft Word and then click File from the drop down button, click Open, navigate to the folder, and then select the document from there. Now, once the file is open, you should see the label outlines as they appear on the label sheet. Now, if for some reason you don't see this, if the page looks blank, all you need to do is go up to the top navigation bar and look for either Table or Layout in the top toolbar. For me, I will click Layout and locate View Grid Lines. Here it is right here. This is what it might look like. All you need to do is select View Grid Lines. Now you may have to expand the box to find this command. On my machine with Microsoft Office 365, I can type View Grid Lines up here and select it right here. Okay, so after we've clicked on it, now we should be able to see all of our outlines. Also, we're going to want to make sure that our document is in print layout by going up to view up here in the navigation bar again, and then making sure that print layout is highlighted. And if it's not, go ahead and click that. This makes the page representation look more like a normal sheet of labels. Now, a couple of important things to point out. Microsoft Word does not display circular labels as circles in this format they actually still look like squares or rectangles. Let me show you. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the website for a second, and I'm gonna just select a circular label. Let's go ahead and select a nice round three inch circle. So we'll go ahead and download that linked file as, we'll go ahead and save it, just like we normally have. All right, now let me open that up. Here we go. All right. Now you can see here that they still look like rectangles. In fact, you can see something that pops up that says, word cannot show circles. Edge of circle will hit center edges of each square. Hmm. Now, if your label design is relatively simple, just try and keep all relevant text and images towards the center of each label cell, knowing that whatever goes in over the circular edges might actually get left off the label in final print. Now, if you have very intricately designed circular labels, say perhaps text needs to curve along the edge just so, or something like that, I suggest, instead of using Word, to go into the template library here and locating your part number, select PDF or an EPS file in your part number there and work with it in Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. But for now, Let's go back to our original Word document, our original label document here. For me, that was 3520sq.doc. 
Okay, now we are ready to start entering our text and images into this template. Now first I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I click on the inside of the cell here. And now I can actually start typing if I want to, or we can start putting in images. Let's make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. I'm gonna go ahead and start with an image. So I'm gonna go up to the menu bar here, click insert, pictures, picture from file. Now I'm going to navigate to where I know that my PNG or my JPEG is, which I know is in this folder. And I'm going to ahead and hit insert, and voila, my image appears right here, relatively centered, looks kind of good. I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, and you'll notice it does not bleed into the other cell next to it. Let's just make it just a little bit bigger. So that way I know it goes from edge to edge. Now, it looks good. The problem is, is that it doesn't leave me much room to write above it or below it, so we need to fix that. Now we'll go up to picture format, and with position, we'll make sure that inline with text is selected. Now we can start to put text. But I already have some text and in an effort to save some time, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that text. Here it is right here. I'm gonna hit Command C or that'll be Control C on a PC, Command C on a Mac. Now I will navigate back to the Word document. Here we are, this is our label document. Now I'm just gonna paste. Now there's three ways I can do that. I can Command V, or control V on a PC, or I can hit paste up here in the top left. I like shortcuts, so we're gonna do command V. All right, let's get rid of that. All right, so now we have my text right here, and we can format it in whichever way you want. Now Word will treat each label as its own contained paragraph, and will automatically do a carriage return when typing space on the line has run out. Now all the tools you use in writing a Word document are functional, meaning that you can resize the image, center its positioning, adjust the formatting to set how the image interacts with the text, and then you can type underneath it, like I'm doing right now. I can change the color of the font, I can change the kind of font, I can make it smaller, bigger, I can center justify it, left justify it, just like you would normally do if you were formatting a Word document. You can even add special features like the uh, adding shadow and beveling tools, as well as curving text if you want to get very fancy. When you are finished getting one label designed the way you want it, we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste it into all the other cells one at a time. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna highlight the whole thing and we're gonna hit copy. One of three ways to do that. You can go up here and hit copy. You can do Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC. Now we'll go ahead and click the cursor into the cell next to it and hit Control V or Command V, or you can go up here and hit Paste right here. And it looks like that is held pretty well. All right, there we go. Nice and even, a little bit of space all around it. So let's go to the next one, V. Okay, let's go ahead and And if this happens, if it goes out of whack just a little bit, that's no problem. We'll just go ahead and re-justify it centered. All right. Now let's take a look at what we've just done. Here we go. Back up a little bit and we can see all of our pretty labels. Everything looks good, everything looks in line, great. Now we need to save it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go up here in the drop down under file, we're gonna hit save as, and now we're gonna save it as something else, not what it's already called. For me, I'm gonna call it test. For you, you can call it whatever you like. And the reason why we wanna call it something different is because we don't want to overwrite the original template. In case you wanna use this template again later on down the road, use different artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and call mine test and I'm gonna save it in the same place. Okay, looks good. Great, there we go. Now, one of the things that I like to do is that I like to print out this Word document on a normal sheet of paper. And then I would like to compare it to the actual label sheet that I've purchased. And what I do is I put them up next to each other and I hold them up to the light. And I see if my labels are gonna line up nicely with the cutouts that are on the label sheet. 
And if they are, that's wonderful. Then you can go ahead and actually print to your labels. This way, it should save you some time and probably quite a bit of money. And that's all there is to it. Now, I hope you'll join me again soon for more tutorials. And don't forget to get your laser and inkjet label stock at laserinkjetlabels.com. We'll see you next time.